So, after the PS5 and Xbox Series X details were released the other week, I spoke to a few people who, whilst all very tech-savvy and up-to-date with current technology, still found some of the new systems and hardware upgrades a bit confusing in terms of what they will actually mean for minute-to-minute -minute gameplay. And whilst I am not the ultimate expert to talk about stuff like SSDs and 3D audio, you can watch Mark Cerny talk about that till the cows come home if you wish, but I thought what I would do today is demonstrate something that has been available on the market in the PC world for a couple of years now and is finally making its way to next gen hardware and that is ray tracing. It's a hot term that's been out in the gaming world for a while but unless you own an RTX graphics card for a PC you won't have experienced the true power of what this technology offers or maybe still don't even understand what ray tracing is actually doing even if you've seen what it actually looks like. So I thought I'd show you today a very simple demonstration of what the core theory behind ray tracing actually is and what we will see in the next generation of consoles using a free software called Blender 3D. Now Blender 3D version 2.83 which is the version I'm using today is extremely powerful. It's come leaps and bounds in the last couple of years alone. A real-time rendering engine known as Eevee has been introduced and more recently an AI accelerated noise reduction system was added to help with the physically based renderer known as Cycles. Through both of these rendering engines, I can show you how and why ray tracing works, and in turn, what new effects you can begin to imagine we will see in video games from the end of this year onwards when the new generation releases. As well as this, you'll get an insight into how individuals and smaller studios will be able to produce visual effects faster, thanks to renderers such as Eevee, despite the fact that they do come at a cost. Ray tracing refers mainly to one specific physical feature, light. From there, we have two areas to focus on, reflections and shadows. Now for these demonstrations, the EV render engine or the material preview that you will see as in Blender will act as the current non-ray tracing video game engines as seen on the likes of PS4 and Xbox One. And the Cycles render engine will act as the new ray tracing systems that we will see on PS5 and Series X. I'd like to please emphasize that these demonstrations are in no way 100% accurate and that game engines use much more complex methods to deal with achieving better reflections on current hardware. This is just a simplified example to show you and demonstrate to you what exactly ray tracing is compared to having it absent in a game. This will also allow me to demonstrate to you a bit of how I'm producing some of the effects for my film, The Dark Following 2, on a very low budget using some of these cheaper and more efficient rendering methods. Let's start off with reflections and let's take the scene here which I've been working on for The Dark Following 2. I've been testing out different shots to show the ship sitting idle and I decided that I want this really smooth reflective metal ground surface for the ship to be on, giving this really nice clean ultra glossy sci-fi aesthetic. So here we are, we're in the scene, we've got the ship set up here, just resting on a plain surface. I'm just going to go into the camera view here, and I position the camera down here. Now, I'm going to show you the material preview, which is going to render using the EV engine, which is what we are imagining is our current PS4 and Xbox One non-ray tracing hardware. You'll notice that when I've got the camera low where it is, we've got to look at these reflections down here. And everything is actually looking pretty great. Everything is reflected as you would expect from the ship. We've got the underside reflected down there. There's nothing really wrong about it. To our initial impression, it looks pretty good. However, as soon as we start to move the camera up and around, keep track of the reflections around on the ground for the underneath of the ship. Notice how a lot of it is actually missing from the reflections or gets cut off completely in weird and strange ways. Now, let's demonstrate the same scene using the Cycles render engine, which we are imagining is the next-gen ray tracing hardware. So this is what the current hardware is rendering like. We're going to go into what ray tracing is going to be simulating. Now, here we go. We're in the same position as we were, and the reflection looks pretty much the same. From down here at this angle, it looks very similar. However, as I start to move the camera around, Notice how the ship is correctly reflected on the surface down here, no matter where the camera is positioned. We see the complete underside of the entire ship, no matter where we are. So now we can see what is happening with ray tracing implemented. But the next question is, why is this happening? Well, before we answer that question, let's look at the other main physical setting affected by ray tracing, which is shadows and lighting. So let's flip over to this simple scene 
that I've got set up here, which features just a plain room with a wall dividing a section of the space. There we go. Very simple. We've got our light position on the left side of the wall over here. And when we render our imitation non ray tracing hardware, you'll see that the other side of the room, if I take everything off here, is completely pitch black. We see that again. There's the other side of the room. There's the wall. That's the space. And we go back into it. Yeah, the lights here, it's illuminating everything, but it gets cut off immediately as it goes around to wrap around here. Now, we know that that's kind of not accurate. You'll also notice up here that the light's not completely wrapping around the corners and the edges of the geometry as we know it should do, despite the fact that the edges are touching from the wall and the ground. Take a look around the room you're sitting in right now. Look for somewhere that isn't being hit by a direct light source. If it's daytime, look for somewhere not in direct view of the window. If it's nighttime, look at somewhere hidden from the lamp or light source in your room. You'll see that there is still light there. There is still some sort of light reaching and permeating every corner of the room. And you can still see that even though there is not a direct light source hitting it. If we switch to our ray tracing version of the renderer, suddenly this side of the room is receiving some diffused light, which is much more physically accurate than the non ray tracing technique. You'll also see down here that the shadows are blending in nicer and the light is cutting off exactly where it should do from where the light source is. Compare that to our non ray tracing version and it's a stark contrast there. This is all due to bounce lighting. The light is emitting from the source, bouncing multiple times off surfaces to hit the darker areas before turning to your eye, which in the case of a game engine or CGI is the camera which is what we're essentially looking at the room through. Unlike real life, reflections are a different ball game in video game engines, as they use the same techniques as lighting to create the illusion of reflections. One bounce to the object, to the surface, to the camera. If the camera cannot see the object or surface that is being reflected, which in the case of this ship happens when we move the camera above, it cannot see the underneath of the ship, it will not reflect at all or the software will try to simulate or basically guess what it thinks should be reflected instead. And that's not how light works at all. But with ray tracing, the ray is literally being referred to as the ray of light bouncing around the scene, which thanks to ray tracing can now bounce multiple times to and from different surfaces to achieve more accurate reflections and shadows. Looking at the ship again here, we can see the underside of the ship in the camera. So the reflections can calculate it on both of the rendering engine versions. However, as soon as we can no longer see the underside of the ship with the camera, it is not reflected in the surface anymore. The hardware is limited to that immediate bounce and has to do a lot of guesswork to figure out what should be reflected on the surface. Ray tracing on the other hand is firing out hundreds if not thousands of rays and that depends on the limitations of the game engine and the hardware to and from the camera bouncing off multiple surfaces multiple times to draw parts of the world or objects that are hidden from the camera. So now the ray is basically hitting the surface bouncing up to the underside of the ship, then bouncing back to the surface and then back to the camera. Without ray tracing, the ground doesn't know where to draw from because the camera itself cannot see the underside of the ship. And that's one of the main differences with reflections. The same technique is applied to lighting and shadows. Back in this room, the light is essentially only predicting where it should be bouncing and illuminating as it is not bouncing multiple times. That's why we get this incredibly pitch black corner over here. As it is not bouncing multiple times, you get this very harsh contrast from single light sources. To counteract this, currently bounce lighting has to essentially be simulated. So I'll demonstrate to you what we've done here to simulate this in the older rendering engines. Essentially, I have to place three ambient lights. You can see them here. One, two, and three in order to essentially simulate the effect of bounce lighting. This is done by placing these artificial dimmer lights in areas where bounce lighting should be actually affecting it, giving it the impression that light has bounced to that area of the room. We can see that this seems more natural now, that the light is bouncing over here, but it's not actually doing that. We have simulated that ourselves. In the ray tracing version, however, if we take these lights off and go into the rendered view, there's no need for simulating that at all because the light is doing all of this work itself and is actually creating a 100% accurate representation of what the light should be doing. 
you place one light source in the scene and the room is lit accurately with light bouncing off this wall here and then round the corner eventually diffusing against this back wall. You get accurate lighting immediately. It's a win-win. Placing artificial light to simulate the effect of bounce lighting is obviously a very laboring and time-consuming process. This is just one room with one light source, but imagine you've got an entire level that you've got to simulate the lighting for. This is why ray tracing will be such a game changer in game development as it will save so much time currently dedicated to essentially just guessing how a room should be lit and placing lights around to achieve the most realistic effect. As I say, now you just put the one light source down and you let the engine do the rest for you. Easy. And this is why a lot of the best looking games at the moment feature static lighting setups instead of dynamic time of day. I mean, take Spider-Man for example. You've got different times of day within the game, but you have fixed daytime, evening and nighttime. Each setting features lighting that is baked into the world and placed specifically, meaning that you get crisp shadows and the artificial bounce lighting is all exactly where it should be. Real time of day systems require loading between lots of different states of lighting. Look at a game with a real time of day system at the moment and wait for it to get to sunset or morning, as this will be where it is most obvious that the lights in the world are literally being loaded in or out or moved around to simulate the bounce lighting. With ray tracing, in theory, all of this laboring work will be erased as the engine itself will be simulating everything on its own. As I've just demonstrated, shadows and general lighting have their own solutions on current hardware, but reflections have always been tricky to deal with, as without that multiple search from the ray literally tracing itself to and from multiple objects back to the surface and then the camera, you can't really achieve that accurate effect. And that's what the term refers to, rays tracing themselves to and from multiple objects. Moving forward with ray tracing technology, not only will games start looking more realistic, but they will essentially be quicker and more flexible to set up. Lighting can be adjusted immediately by moving one or two primary sources instead of playing with tens of lights to get a scene looking as it should be. If we take a look through this camera as well, you'll notice a couple of things that are different between the ray tracing version and the standard game engine version. Whilst at a glance look pretty realistic, as you get into it, you start to realize that there's something off about it. So we're going to look at our current game engine version right now and let's take a look at what's wrong with it. As I say, the reflections look pretty good. Um, there's a bit missing there. That's that's OK. But generally, eh, you could pass with that. What's strange about this? Well, the fact that we're getting a reflection of the sun underneath here when the sun's over there. This is kind of in pitch black when in reality, we should be getting some bounce from the sun hitting here and then back onto that side of the ship. The connection between these objects to the ground is not as accurate as it could be. The way to demonstrate exactly why this is wrong is to switch to the ray traced version and you'll start to see some things that you didn't notice were missing, but when you see that they're here, you'll be like, ah, that's it. So immediately you'll see that on this very shiny surface at the back of the ship, we're seeing this reflection of the light source on the metal there. On the other version, it's not there at all. At a glance, it doesn't look too bad, but when you see what it actually should look like, that's that difference between something becoming photorealistic. The same thing if we look at the reflections underneath the ship. Here, everything's kind of pitch black, the light is not bouncing around properly as it should do. But in the ray traced version, we've got light bouncing from the sun, down to the ground, off various angles of the ship, back to illuminate the underneath of the ship, and the reflections are accurately portraying the landing gear below it as well. So there's just a couple of examples of what exactly the difference is between ray tracing and the video game engines that we currently have. As for 3D rendering in terms of filmmaking, rendering is obviously much quicker using the EV or the real-time render engine, as the engine is taking shortcuts to achieve possible but not necessarily realistic results. As I say right here, you can kind of get away with that shot looking pretty good. It's not too bad. However, trying to create a scene, let's say from above, the limits of the engine start to become clear. And if I wanted to get a shot from up here, it's going to be a bit more obvious that the, the engine is limited in what it can do. And that's where I'd have to switch to the cycles engine, but this will dramatically increase the render times as each frame has to calculate those render paths for each ray of light. Now, luckily we can actually manually adjust how many bounces of light 
the render engine is using and I would probably lower this if I to if I were to render it because I don't need that many bounces but it will still take more time than just rendering that one initial bounce from the real time render engine that is Eevee. For single images I could keep this really high because you know one minute for a frame for a final rendered image not too bad however if for example the dark following two I need to be exporting 25 frames a second for a 10 second shot which is 250 frames rendering it cycles at one minute a frame is a lengthy process that's 250 minutes that's over four hours to render 10 seconds of footage when I could be using Eevee to render images almost instantaneously and could render the same thing in about I don't know 10 minutes max at the cost of physical accuracy with the new PS5 and Xbox Series X hardware, ray tracing is finally becoming a reality in real time gaming, which is unbelievable. And hopefully through this video, you've learned a bit about this hot term that you've probably heard a lot about already and definitely will hear a lot more about in the future, but maybe didn't know exactly to this point what the physics behind it actually were. As I say, please keep in mind this is not an accurate demonstration of video game engines, but more a demonstration of the theory of ray tracing and how it works in real time. If you have any questions or have any additional insight to add, please let me know in the comments below. This channel is all about learning, so if you can share any knowledge, that would be really great. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.